Hello Parasites, this is Atomic Wolf, and if you haven't noticed yet, either by my brief mentionings of it, or the two audio dramas I've produced of it, I love Bioshock. I mean really love Bioshock. It's the title I hail just as highly as Fallout, and I pick it up again and again just as much as every year. It's just something about experiencing that story repeatedly that keeps me coming back. Really though, there's truly an essence about Bioshock that Ken Levine and the folks at Irrational Games created that no other game can compare to. I mean, even if you don't care for linear type games or platformers in general, what opens up the game world of Bioshock is the vast amount of lore you discover throughout the game. While exploring a once prosperous city inhabited by crazed genetic drug users is fun, stepping across another audio log of one of Rapture's many citizens can have you at the edge of your seat sometimes. Another New Year's, another night alone. I'm out and you're stuck in Festus, working. Huh. Imagine my surprise. But I guess I'll have another drink. <laughs> Here's a toast to Diane McClintock, silliest girl in Rapture. Silly enough to fall in love with Andrew Ryan. Silly enough. But before this starts to sound like some sort of late promotion, let's get into why I'm really here today. Bioshock, in my honest opinion, is so unique of a concept that I think it deserves an alternative form of media besides just on console or PC. Now, any true fan knows that John Shirley released a novel called Bioshock Rapture that pretty much covers the story of Andrew Ryan's rapture from beginning to end, all through the eyes of Bill McDonough. This is really the only piece of Bioshock media that expands beyond the games, and of course there's a very small book regarding Bioshock Infinite called Mind and Revolt that covers a little story about Daisy Fitzroy. But the closest we ever got to a Bioshock film or show was some years ago when director Gore Verbinski was in charge of the official Bioshock movie. If you can believe it, the movie was literally eight weeks away from shooting before the project was cancelled. There's a lot of speculation and theories as to what really caused this, but Gore stated that Universal Studios didn't want to fund a film like this if it was R-rated. The price tag just wasn't sitting right with them. But this brings me to the beginning of my point. Though a Bioshock movie would be great, I think to fully digest the story of Rapture and everything that happens in it, something more along the lines of a series would do better. A series that covers just about everything that's written in John Shirley's Bioshock Rapture. Starting all the way back from when Andrew Ryan was a successful New York businessman and perhaps ending with the Civil War and the inevitable fall of his underwater city. These are things I don't think a simple two hour movie could cover, and a series with the right direction and casting could skyrocket the Bioshock title higher than it is. And I know Bioshock throws you into the worst possible moments of Rapture so you can dive right into the action. It's advertised as a survival horror in the first two titles. Dark and bloody hallways with pipe wielding crazies, lightning shooting out of your fingertips and big daddies charging at you. So some would think about my idea, wouldn't it poorly reflect on the games with a show that takes place before all this happens? Well I don't think so. I don't think Bioshock capitalized purely off its violent aspect. Bioshock made waves because of its one of a kind setting and extremely captivating story as well. I mean it's an underwater city that thrived throughout the 40s and 50s and made scientific advancements never even dreamed of. Andrew Ryan ran that society based on individualism and competition, being held down by no morals. I should not need to remind each and every citizen of Rapture that free enterprise is the foundation upon which our society has been established. Parasites will be punished. I could go on, but you could understand how amazing this concept is. That's why I think if there was a long-running series of a Rapture story, it would be carried out similar to Mad Men's formula. Mind you, similar. A lot of business was had to orchestrate the construction of Rapture, and I don't think that should be overlooked. It would be a perfect time in the series to get inside the mind of Andy Ryan early on, and watch him prepare for what was coming, along with forming bonds with characters like Bill and Sullivan along the way. Of course, the business of building a city under the sea isn't like the business of landing a deal with Hershey's. 
but like Madman, Ryan can play the role of Don, while his ever-growing team of workers both help the effort and fall into personal dramas as well for character development. At some point, maybe season by season, the show would progressively become less like Mad Men and more like Boardwalk Empire, as dark undertones follow the slow but sure decline of Rapture, and major benchmarks begin to shape the city for the worst. The discovery of Adam and Plasmids, the killing of Frank Fontaine, the rise of Atlas, and so many other little things that we've learned just through these audio logs. In fact, the series' focus, I think, should be on Andrew Ryan, in my mind, he's going to be the character that you see change the most. He's controversial, a tough leader, has a rich philosophy, and he has a long fall from grace. Ryan follows a similar pattern to Dutch Vanderlyn's character from Red Dead Redemption in a way. He starts off as this strong, deeply passionate father figure who then slowly becomes the very thing he's preached so harshly against. And let's not forget their particular distaste for modern government. It's qualities like these that make Andrew Ryan the perfect fit as the main protagonist of this series. Of course, a considerable amount of time would be spent exploring other characters like Su Chong and Tenenbaum, Fontaine, Sander Cohen, the invention of Big Daddies and Little Sisters, and a whole fleet of characters we get introduced to in the first two titles. So that's my idea for a plotline in general, and where the attention should spend time on. I don't think a series about Bioshock based on what comes after the fall would make much sense in my book, as the story has already been told through the games. Subtle hints of what's to come down the line could be used instead, like Jack being genetically developed by Su Chong and Tenenbaum, or Johnny Topside being turned into Subject Delta could be great additions as the Rapture story is being told. So with a budget high enough to bring out a realistic setting, a script to captivate the audience, and acting great enough to breathe life into the characters, I think an ongoing Bioshock series executed the right way would not only be pleasing to Bioshock fans, but also introduce newcomers to a title they've really been missing out on. That's just one man's way of bringing Bioshock to the small screen. But when it comes to perspective, I really don't think it matters on who it's zeroed in on, but overall quality and execution would be key. So tell me in the comments what and how you think a Bioshock show or movie would play out in your mind. Or do you think there's even need for either at all? When the heck are we going to see another Bioshock game while we're at it? Let me know. And be sure to let me know that you're not a parasite by clicking the subscribe button. Thanks for standing by, and I'll see you next time.